Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So, this will be now the last part of our domain extension protocol for perfectly secure broadcast based on Reed Solomon error correcting codes. Now, we will see the actual polynomial time protocol. And to get the polynomial time protocol, what we just need to do is we just need to modify the warm up protocol. Rest of the things remains the same uh, as it was earlier for the exponential time protocol. Okay. So, let us quickly recall the warm up protocol and where exactly it requires the parties to perform exponential amount of computation. So, in that warm up protocol the part each party has prepared its response vector and each party also would have received a local code word from the sender. They do not know whether the sender has distributed the same code word to all the honest parties or not. To identify the same each pair of party would have uh, exchanged uh, a constant number of supposedly common points on their respective uh, local code words and based on that exchange they have prepared this response vectors and broadcasted them using instances of the bit broadcast protocol. Now, based on the publicly available response vectors, the parties would have prepared a consistency graph where an edge between the nodes representing the parties P i and P j implies that the ith component in the ith party's code word is same as the ith component in the jth party's code word and the jth component of the jth party's code word is same as the jth component in the ith party's code word provided both p i and p j are honest. Because the edge would have been added only if p i is not in conflict with p j in the response vector and p j is not in conflict with p i in its own response vector. Okay. And then in the earlier protocol, earlier warm up protocol the parties would have checked if there exists a click of size at least 2 t plus 1 which should be there in the consistency graph if sender has behaved honestly. If it is not present, if the click is not present of a click of size 2 t plus 1 is not present that definitely implies that the sender is corrupt. So, simply stop the protocol there and take some default message or as the output on the behalf of the sender. But if a code is obtained, then at least t plus 1 honest parties are present in the code. Then we have proved that local code words of all honest parties in the code are same because since they constitute a cloak because since the honest parties in the code constitute a click it means that pair wise uh, between every pair of honest parties there are some common components in their respective local code words and based on that we can say that all honest parties in code have at least t plus 1 common components. And now using the properties of Reed Solomon code words, we know that all honest parties in code have the same code word received from the center. And then there were some more properties which were there which are not required at the moment. So, it is this particular step in the warm up protocol which requires the parties to perform exponential amount of computation to check whether in their respective uh, to check whether in the consistency graph a click of size at least 2 t plus 1 is present or not. Now, instead of checking whether a click of size at least 2 t plus 1 is present or not, we will check for a core set of parties by checking for an empty star and using the related properties. So, this is now the modified protocol which is a polynomial time protocol where we are now trying to identify the core set of parties through an empty star and related properties. Just to uh, remember what we want here is to check whether there exist. So, we want to check if there is a core set of parties core set of size at least 
2 t plus 1 such that all honest parties in core have received the same code word from the sender. That is our goal and we want to check this in polynomial time. If I do not put this constraint that you should be able to check core in polynomial time, then we already have a method check for a click which will work, but that requires exponential amount of computation. So, this is now the modified method. The parties will make public the response vectors based on that the consistency graph will be constructed that part remains the same. But now instead of checking whether a click of size 2 t plus 1 is present in the consistency graph, parties check if an empty star is present in the graph. For this the parties use the star finding algorithm where the input will be now g complement. The output of the star finding algorithm will be either a star in the graph g or the message star is not present. Now, if the message is star not present, so if no star obtained then discard the sender that means sender is definitely corrupt and terminate the protocol with some default output on the behalf of the sender. The claim is that an honest sender will never be discarded because if the sender has behaved honestly that means it has given the same code word to all the honest parties in the system and there are at least 2 t plus 1 honest parties in the system and those two those 2 t plus 1 honest parties will constitute a click in the graph g and remember if in the graph g a click of size at least n minus t is there and n minus t will be 2 t plus 1 because we are working in the setting where n is 3 t plus 1. So, if n minus t is 2 t plus 1 and if a click of size 2 t plus 1 is there in the consistency graph which is guaranteed to be there for an honest sender, then the output of the star finding algorithm will always be a star, it will never be the message star not present. So, an honest sender is guaranteed not to be discarded. If at all the sender is discarded, definitely he is corrupt because he has not distributed consistent or common code word to sufficiently many number of honest parties. So, we will not consider that case, we will consider the case when a star is obtained and from that point onward how to take the protocol forward. So, if a star is obtained then the first claim is that all honest parties in C have the same local code word. This is because there are at least t plus 1 honest parties in D. Why? Because if a star is obtained then the cardinality of C will be at least t plus 1 because it will be of size n minus 2 t and n minus 2 t will be t plus 1 and the cardinality of D will be at least 2 t plus 1 because the cardinality of D will be n minus t. Now, if there are 2 t plus 1 total number of parties in D, then among them T could be corrupt whose edges with the honest parties in C may not be trusted because even though they are in conflict with the honest parties in C, they simply said I am fine with honest parties in C. But there are at least T plus 1 honest parties in D whose edges with the honest parties in C are genuine. That means, those edges represent that among those pair of parties there is no conflict. So, there are at least t plus 1 honest parties in D and 
due to the property of the anti star every honest party in C is guaranteed to have an edge with all the honest parties in D. Now, let us see what is the consequence of this. For simplicity for the purpose of demonstration assume that the honest parties in D are P 1, P 2, P of T plus 1. Since D is guaranteed to have at least T plus 1 honest parties for the purpose of demonstration I am taking P 1, P 2, P of T plus 1 to be those honest parties, but that need not be always the case it could be any T plus 1 honest parties. Now, those T plus 1 honest parties have received their code words from the sender and now consider an honest party P i who is present in C. So, this P i is present in C and it is honest and this P i has an edge with P 1 in the star. Now, why it has an edge with P 1? It has an edge with P 1 because they have exchanged their supposedly common points and they found that C i 1 is same as C 1 1 and that is why P i would have said in its response vector that I am fine with P 1 and P 1 would have said in its response vector that I am fine with P i after checking this condition is satisfied. In the same way P i has an edge with P 2 that means during the pairwise consistency test P i would have found that C i 2 is same as C 2 2 and it would have said in its response vector that I am in I am fine with P 2 and in the same way P 2 would have found that C 2 2 is same as C i 2 and P 2 would have said in its response vector that P 2 is fine with P i. And like that since P i has an edge with P sub t plus 1 that means the component C i t plus 1 is same as the component C of t plus 1 C of t plus 1. Now, let us consider another honest party P j who is also present in C. Now, the party P j also has an edge with all these parties P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub t plus 1 in the star graph in the star structure. Now, P j has an edge with P 1. P j has an edge with P 1 implies that C j 1 is same as C 1 1 because during the pairwise consistency check P j would have found that C j 1 is same as C 1 1 and it would have said in its response vector that I am fine with P 1 and P 1 would have found that C j 1 is same as C 1 1 and P 1 would have declared that in its response vector V 1 j is 1. In the same way P j has an edge with P 2 that implies component wise the second component in jth party's code word is same as the second component of second party's code word and like that since P j has an edge with the party P t plus 1 that means the t plus 1 th component in the jth party's code word is same as the t plus 1 th component in the t plus 1 th party's code word. Now, based on these things we can simply say that C 1 1 is same as C i 1 and C 1 1 is same as C j 1 that means the first component of the ith party code word and the jth party code word are same. The second component in the ith party code word and the second component in the jth party code word they are also same and like that the t plus 1 th component in the ith party code word and the t plus 1 th component in the j jth party code word they are same. And recall we have proved that if we have a Reed Solomon code word corresponding to a message encoding polynomial of t degree where the two code words are having same t plus 1 or more number of components then the two Reed Solomon code words correspond to the same message. So, now P i has received a code word from the sender where the message encoding polynomial has degree t and P j also has received a code word from the sender a local code word corresponding to a message encoding polynomial of t degree 
both of them are members of the set C and we have proved that they have same number of components at t plus 1 or more, uh, they have same number of t, they have t plus 1 or more number of same components that automatically implies that p i's and p j's code words are the same and that proves this claim. All honest parties in C have the same local code word. So, that is an important claim. However, neither the subset C nor the subset D can be considered as the core set. Recall, we are trying to identify a core set of parties of size at least 2t plus 1, where it is guaranteed that all the honest parties in that core set have the same local code word. What we have argued till now is that all the honest parties in the C component of a star, if at all a star is obtained, have the same local code word. But now, the uh, fact is that neither the subset C nor the subset D can be considered as the potential code set. Why C cannot be considered as the potential code set? because the cardinality of C can be only t plus 1 in the worst case. Recall that the cardinality of C is greater than equal to n minus 2 t and if n is equal to 3 t plus 1, then n minus 2 t is guaranteed to be at least t plus 1. Well, at least t, t plus 1 does not mean that there could be more than there is necessarily more than t plus 1 parties in C. It could be possible that we have a consistency graph where a click is present in such a way that the C component of a star has exactly t plus 1 parties. That could be possible. If that happens, then core uh, then the C component of the star cannot be considered as the core set because we require a core set of parties to be of size at least 2 t plus 1, which will be used later in the remaining stages of the warm up protocol. Now, you might be wondering that ok, it is fine, C component cannot be considered as the potential star, why cannot we work with the D component? Because the D component of the star is guaranteed to have a cardinality of n minus t which is at least 2t plus 1. Well, size wise the d component satisfies the requirement of the core set, but all honest parties in d need not be pairwise consistent, because recall the definition of nt star. In the definition of nt star, there is no restriction, there is no compulsion that all the parties in D should constitute a click. There is a guarantee that every node in C has an edge with every node in D, but it is not guaranteed that every node in D has an edge with every node in D. That means, even though the D component of the star will have 2 t plus 1 parties, it is not necessary that all honest parties in D have the same common code word received from the center, because they need not be pairwise consistent among each other. Right. So, now what we will do is, it, we will instead check for additional parties who have the same local code word as the honest parties in C. Right. So, remember the claim, the claim that we have proved is all honest parties in C have the same local code word, but the problem right now is that we do not have sufficient number of honest parties in C. We want a core set where core should have at least t plus 1 honest parties, but we might be stuck with a C whose cardinality is exactly t plus 1. So, what we would like to now do is we will check instead for additional parties who are not right now members of C by trying to expand the C set to check whether we can include additional parties in this expanded C set, who are also guaranteed to have the same code word as the honest parties in C. So, now let us see how this expansion work. So, first of all as we have proved in the claim, all the honest parties in the C component of the star, if at all a star is obtained 
will have the same local code word that means they have received the same code word from the sender. Let us denote that common code word which is available only to the honest parties in the C set as C1 to Cn. We now want to find additional honest parties who also would have received the same code word C1 to Cn from the sender. For that we first try to expand the D component of the star. The expanded D set will be denoted by F. Now, what will be the criteria to include a party in the F set? We will include a party P sub K to the F set. If that party has edges with at least T plus 1 nodes in the existing C set in the consistency graph. Now, because of this criteria all the parties who are already part of the D component of the star will be included in F because every party in the D component of the star has edges with C T plus 1 nodes in the C component of the star because that is the definition of the anti star. So, all the parties in D will be by default included in F, but now there might be some additional parties P K who were not present in D, but now they are included in F because those parties have edges with at least T plus 1 nodes in the C component of the star. Now, the claim here is that if we take all the honest parties in the F component, the kth component of such parties that means if I take any honest party P k in this set F and if I focus on the kth component of such honest parties P k that kth component is nothing but the kth component of this common Reed Solomon code word held by all the honest parties in core. Why so? So, what is the criteria for including P k to the F set? We have included P k to the F set because it has edges with T plus 1 nodes in C. Now, among those T plus 1 nodes in C at least one of the nodes is honest. Call that honest node P i. That means, in the consistency graph there is an edge between P k and P i. Now, why there is an edge between P k and P i? Because during the pairwise consistency test P k and P k P k and P i would have found that the kth component in the kth parties code word is same as the kth component in the ith parties code word. And what is the kth component in the ith parties code word? Well, the kth component in the ith parties code word is CK because PI is an honest party in C, and as per our assumption, every honest party PI in C have this code word. So, PI would have received the code word C1, C2, CK, CN from the sender, and during the pairwise consistency test, when PK would have sent the supposedly common values on its code word. So, one of those components would have been CKK, PI would have checked that CKK is same as CK. That guarantees that the kth component in kth parties code word is same as the kth component and the common code word held by the honest parties in C. So, that is a property of the expanded D set but we are not yet done. We have to expand the C set as well now. So, we will expand the C set and call the expanded C set as the E set, where the criteria to include a party P k to this expanded set E is the following. We should check whether P k has edges with at least 2 t plus 1 nodes in F. Okay. I stress 2 t plus 1 nodes in F not in D. Now, due to this condition for including a party in the E set, every party in C will be by default included in E because in F 
the members of D will be anyhow present that we have already discussed. And now if there is a party in C, it will be anyhow having edges with all the nodes in D and D's cardinality would have been 2 t plus 1 that means, P i has an edge P i has edge with at least 2 t plus 1 nodes in F because D is a part of F. So, that means, P i will be included in E as well. So, every party P i who was part of C will be included in E as well. Now, comes the crux of the whole thing we can now claim that every honest party p k in this E set expanded C set which is E set have this common code word C 1 to C n. Okay. Why this is so? Well, E set will already have the honest parties in C and they already have this common code word C 1 to C n that comes as part of the claim itself. Now, what if we have added a new honest party P k in this expanded E set that was not earlier part of the C set, but that is now a part of the expanded C set namely E set. Our claim is that even those parties have the same common code word C 1 to C n as possessed by the honest parties in the C set. Why so? This is because such parties P k who are now newly included to the expanded E set they have edges with at least 2 t plus 1 nodes in F set. Among those 2 t plus 1 nodes at least t plus 1 are honest. Say those t plus 1 nodes are p i 1, p i 2, p i sub t plus 1 and corresponding to each such honest party p i from the F set with which p k has an edge or with whom p k code word is pairwise consistent this condition will be satisfied. This comes from the property that we had just proved in the earlier slide regarding the honest parties in the F set. Namely, every honest party P i in the F set, their ith component. So, if I consider a party P i in the F set, the ith component of their code word, uh, the ith component of its code word is same as the ith component of this common code word. And P k is pairwise consistent with P i that means, the ith component of the kth party's code word is also same as C i. So, that means, if I take the t plus 1 honest parties P i who are there in F to be say P 1, P 2, P sub T plus 1 and P 1 has C 1, P 2 has C 2, P sub T plus 1 has C, tup, C sub T plus 1 as part of their local code words. Then since P k has an edge with P 1 that means C k 1 is same as C 1 because of the pairwise consistency test. Since P k has an edge with P 2 that means, C k 2 is same as C 2 during the pairwise consistency test and like that since P k has an edge with the t plus 1 th party that means, the t plus 1 th component in the kth party scored word is same as the t plus 1 th component in the t plus 1 th party scored word which is C of t plus 1. Now, if this is the case that means, the code word held by the party P k is nothing but the code word C 1, C 2, C n because the code word held by the party P k has T plus 1 or more number of same components as the common code word C 1 to C n held by the honest parties in the C set. So, that ensures that all the honest parties in E, even the newly included parties, newly included honest parties in E have this common code word C 1 to C n. Now, we will check whether this expanded E set is of size at least 2 t plus 1 or not. If this expanded E set is of size at least 2 t plus 1, we will assign it as a core 
otherwise we will simply discard the sender because sender is corrupt and it has not distributed sufficient number of common code words during the protocol. Okay. So, now let us see the demonstration of this expansion of code. Okay. So, imagine the honest parties in the system are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We are taking the case when n is equal to 7 and t is equal to 2. So, two parties could be corrupt for simplicity we are taking the first five parties to be honest and the last two parties to be corrupt and say the sender is uh, sender has distributed the code words sender is honest suppose for simplicity. So, in the consistency graph you can see that there is an edge between every pair of nodes in this subset 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 namely the edge 1 to 1 is also present because when I say a pairwise consistency test happens between every pair of nodes p i and p j that also includes the case when i is equal to j. So, p 1 would have checked its own code word with its own code word and by default it, should, it is considered to be pairwise consistent. So, 1 will have an edge with 1, 2 has an edge with 2, 3 has an edge with 3, 4 has an edge with 4 and 5 has an edge with 5. We do not care what the corrupt party says what regarding their response factor. Okay. So, now you can see that in this consistency graph there is an edge between every pair of honest nodes okay. and the self loops are also there. So, since the graph the consistency graph is guaranteed here to have a click of size 5 namely a click involving 5 nodes is present the star finding algorithm will output a star and the star will be having a C component 2, 4 and 5 and the D component having the nodes 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5. That means, all the honest parties in this C component have the same common code word received from the sender. Now, let us see what happens during the expansion whether D will be expanded to F and new parties are included in F or not. Well, there will be no new party included in D, all the old parties in D will be a part of F set, but no new party will be included in F set, because the criteria for including a party in the F set is that the party P k which you want to include in the F set should have edges with T plus 1 nodes in C. So, who are the parties outside D? P 6 and P 7 and T plus 1 is 3. So, P 6 does not have edges with 3 nodes at least 3 nodes in this collection 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it has an edge with 3 fine, it has an edge with 5, but it does not have an edge with 1. So, 6 cannot be included in F and in the 7 say same way 7 also cannot be included because 7 has an edge with 2 and 7 has an edge with 4, but 7 does not have an edge with either 1 or uh, 3 or 5. Okay. So, F set remains the same as the D set, but one when we now try to expand the C set you can see that all the parties in C will be present in the expanded C namely E and there will be now two parties who will be included due to the expansion criteria. Namely, P 1 which was not earlier part of the C component of the star will be included in the C component, because it now has edge with edge, edges with 2 t plus 1 nodes in the F components and 2 t plus 1 is 5. So, P 1 has an edge with at least 5 parties in the F set namely 1 has an edge with 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, that is why it is included in C and in the same way 3 which was earlier not included in the C component will be included because 3 has an edge with 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And since the size of E is 2 t plus 1 namely 5, the core will be set to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and all the honest parties in this core is are guaranteed to have received the same code word from the sender. So, this is the actual uh, process of finding the core. We will first check whether a star is present or not through
through the star finding algorithm and then we will run the expansion process and if the expansion process gives us an E f pair where the E component is guaranteed to be of at least size 2 t plus 1 then we will set it to a core otherwise we will discard the sender. Now, we want to prove here that if the sender is honest this expansion process will indeed output an E f pair where the E component is of size 2 t plus 1 that means an honest sender is not going to be discarded. Let us see why. If the sender is honest then first of all this n t star will produce a star in the graph because if the sender is honest a click of size at least 2 t plus 1 is guaranteed in the graph. So, the star finding algorithm will output an n t star. Now, the second claim is if the sender is honest then eventually not eventually the then the through this expansion process the star will be expanded to a new pair E f where the cardinality of E will be 2 t plus 1. Let us see why. So, when the star algorithm is run on the g complement graph. So, in the g complement graph the edge set is E and if the sender is honest and an edge is present in the g complement graph then at least one of the end points of that edge corresponds to a corrupt party. Because in the g complement graph an edge will be present either between a pair of corrupt nodes or between an honest node and a corrupt node. Because in g there will be no edge in g no edge between any pair of a eh, in g uh, no uh, in g there will be an edge sorry in g there will be an edge between every pair of honest nodes or honest parties if the sender is honest that means in G complement there will be no edge involving a pair of honest parties. That means if at all there is an edge in the G complement graph one of the end points of that edge corresponds to a corrupt party. Now, when we run the star algorithm in such a on such a graph and if an honest party becomes a part of a matching that means it becomes a it, 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 it becomes a matched node that means it, it is a part of the maximum matching that means corresponding to that party p i there is some corrupt party p j who is present in the maximum matching. That means for every honest party p i who is not part of the c component here in the star finding algorithm who is not part of the c component there is a corresponding distinct honest uh, distinct corrupt party who is of course also outside the c component okay why distinct because we are considering matching here so it can't be possible that there are two honest parties say pi who is pulled out of the c component because of this corrupt pj in the graph g prime and there is another honest party pk who is also pulled out because the same pj has an edge with p k and p i p j p j p k are all part of the matching that is not going to be the case because in that case p i p j and p j p k does not constitute a valid matching. Okay. Now, let us see another category of honest parties who may be outside the c component right. So, in the star finding algorithm which parties are outside the c component all the matched nodes and all the triangle heads. So, we have argued that if an honest party is outside the c component because it was a part of the matched nodes that means along with that honest party a corrupt party also is outside. Now, suppose there is an honest party p i who is 
who is not a member of the C component of the star because it is a part of the triangle head. In that case, what is the scenario? In our graph, we have a structure in the graph G prime, a structure like this is present. We have the node representing P i and an H P j P k part of the maximum matching such that the edge between P i and P j is there and the edge between P i and P k is there. Okay. That means, corresponding to now this honest party P i who is a part of the triangle head and who is not included in the C component, a pair of corrupt parties is also outside the C component. So, now the summary here is that for every honest node who is not included in the C component of the star, at least one corrupt party also remains outside the C component, because that honest party P i could be outside C either because of this condition or because of this condition. If it, if it is outside due to this condition, that means one corrupt party P j has pulled P i outside. Whereas, if the honest P i is outside because of this triangle head condition, that means P j and P k have together pulled out P i out of the C component. So, irrespective of the case, we can say that for every honest party outside the C component who does not make it to the C component, there is at least one corrupt party who also does not make it to the C component. But there are at most T corrupt parties in the system. If there are at most T corrupt parties in the system, they can pull out at most t honest parties from being part of the C component. So, t corrupt parties not making it to C component and along with that t honest parties are also not making it to the C component. If we ignore this worst case scenario, we will be still left with at least t plus 1 parties who are guaranteed to be honest and who will be now present in the C component of the star if the sender is honest. All this I am arguing if the sender is honest, because we want to argue that sender will not be discarded during this expansion process. So, that means, if the sender is honest, it is guaranteed that the star finding algorithm will output a star, where the C component will have at least t plus 1 honest parties. Now, if the C component has at least t plus 1 honest parties and if in the consistency graph there is an edge between every pair of honest parties, then during this expansion process all the honest parties who do, who do not make it to D will end up making it to F. Right? So, there might be some honest parties who were not present in the D component because of this condition but they will be now included in the f component if we run this expansion process because those parties p k every party p k on every honest p k who is present in f, but not in d they will have edges with at least t plus 1 nodes in c because c is guaranteed to have at least t plus 1 honest parties and every honest p k outside d will have an edge with every honest party in C. So, D will be expanded to F and as a result F will now have all the honest parties if sender is honest that means, the cardinality of F will be at least 2 T plus 1. And now let us see the expansion for the C to E part. If we see the expansion for the C to E part, it turns out that C will be expanded to E and it will also include all honest parties. That means, it could be possible that the C component does not have all the honest parties, because T corrupt parties could have pulled out T honest parties from being part of the C component during the star finding algorithm. But when we run this expansion process, those parties P k who missed out to be a part of the C component will end up to be a part of E component because all those missing parties will now have edges with have with 2 t plus 1 nodes 
in F because F is guaranteed to have all the honest parties and there are 2T plus 1 honest parties guaranteed in the system. That means, if the sender is honest, this expansion process will end up including all honest parties who missed out to be up to being part of D and C and they will be now part of F and E components and E component will now have all the honest parties at least 2 T plus 1 in number and an honest sender will not be discarded. However, if the E set does not turn out to be of size 2 T plus 1 definitely sender is corrupt. So, it is safe to discard the sender and take some default input default message as the output on the behalf of the sender. Now, once and now you can see that the star finding algorithm is polynomial time and this expansion process is also polynomial time because we are not finding any click in this graph at no step we are checking for a click in the graph. So, now if we incorporate this modification in the uh, warm up protocol we get a warm up protocol with polynomial computation complexity and then when we run that warm up protocol in the exponential time domain extension domain extension protocol where we have every party broadcasting a combined response vector we get a polynomial computation complexity domain extension protocol. So, this is the full domain extension protocol present in this very beautiful work. Uh, so, in the, the, the reference for today's lecture is this paper and I would like to stress that this whole area of uh, broadcast and uh, Byzantine agreement uh, domain extension is a very uh, active area of research very fundamental work is going on. So, if you are interested to know more about uh, this line of work you can refer to this paper. Thank you.